Hey guys, it's Becky with Design Bundles and I'm here to talk to you today about using dingbat fonts. So of course they have a funny and quirky name and you may be asking yourself, what in the world is a dingbat font? Or you may just be like, hey, those are really neat characters. I wonder how I get to them. So either way, let's talk a little bit about that. We're gonna cover a few ways to access those and show you a perfect example of what you would use those for. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so here we are over here at fontbundles.net and what we're going to search for today, like we talked about, is dingbat fonts. Now of course Font Bundles has a whole slew of dingbat fonts and you can sort them out if you want a seasonal script, that sort of thing. What I love about dingbat fonts is basically you get access to all these neat little, we'll call them tools. Uh, they are great for accenting your designs. They are great for if you're not really a doodler, but you like designs that have doodles. Like check out this one over here. It has a lighthouse and a heart. This one is for Halloween. There's just so many options to choose from. And it's always good to at least know how to use dingbat fonts and, you know, have a few in your arsenal for your crafting needs. The one that we're going to use today is this one right here. It is called Glue Gun, and of course it's on font bundles. So I'm going to proceed to check out, and then we are going to open it in Silhouette Studio. So I will add to cart. When I go to my cart, I'll just hit check out now. Continue to payment. I'm going to use my store credit. And now I will simply download. When you click download now, it takes you to your purchase screen. You can hit download files. Now you have glue gun regular and glue gun two regular. So we're gonna go ahead and download both of those. I choose the open type fonts. Now what we want to do is install these. So I'm on a PC, so I can simply open up the file as it downloads and hit install. And then repeat the process for the second one. So you can see that the first is the actual font and the second one are the dingbats that you get with the font. It's important to notate things like that because they can be important for when you're trying to access those fonts. Now, if you have Silhouette Studio open, you do want to go ahead and restart your software. Okay, so once you have Silhouette Studio open, let's go ahead and notate that the reason that we have to restart is because during the opening process, Silhouette Studio is able to pick up and recognize any new fonts that you've installed. So that's a very important step to remember because it could be frustrating to install a new font and then it's not where you thought it would be. Uh, usually what I do is I will save up fonts and install them all at one time. That's just more because I usually leave Silhouette Studio open in the background a lot, working on different projects. So um, I just kind of go on a font binge whenever I close it out. But anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about your fonts. When you're ready to work with fonts, you can come over here on the right hand side and open your text style panel and that will access your fonts here. If you're not comfortable with the icons yet, that's okay. There is a panels uh, menu up at the top and you can simply click on panels and text style is also right here for you. So let's go ahead and talk about using glyphs and dingbats. So glyphs are letters of a font that are usually characterized by some special flourish or you know maybe it's a combination of letters that looks better than typing them individually there's a whole different reason why you would want to check out glyphs but in this case in dingbat fonts it's also useful because it gives you a preview of what those font letters will look like so if i look for glue gun these are my regular letters so that's not really what i'm looking for what i want is the 
font name below it, that's our glue gun too. And if I hover over these icons, I get a preview of what each one of them will be. And that's super exciting. Now, let me pause before I get you guys too excited about this. The Glyphs panel is a designer edition upgrade. So what that means is that you have to upgrade to the designer edition before you gain access to this. So if you have not gained access to the Glyphs panel yet, that's okay. Um, one cheat that you can do is, and I used to do this all the time, you can type out the alphabet. And then I usually type it out again with my caps on. And then sometimes too, they can be hidden in your numbers and your special characters. So just try to get them all typed out and that should give you a good start to what they look like. Now, I'm not saying do this every time. Um, I used to keep a file that would have these already typed out for me and then I could just simply change the name of the font. Okay, but these are what our dingbats look like. So, if you don't have access to glyphs, this is an option that you have. You can also use the character map that is included in Windows, and that will give you a preview of them as well. It's just a really small preview. So it's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, and then, you know, once you can see the individual dingbats that are included with the font, all you have to do is ungroup to access them. So keep that in mind. I'm going to delete this for now. And I'm going to use my glyphs panel here. Now what I want to do is I want to choose to create text and open a little text box. Now anything that I click on will appear. And I can scroll down and get a book. Let me see, I really liked that first glue gun. Okay, so once I have a couple things to choose from, I can enlarge them. And if you want to start out with them enlarged, that's completely fine too. Because I can double click this and I can go back and add any little thing that I want to. Now what I love about this font is it really incorporates all crafts. So like that's a little Cricut machine and um, you know there's a bust for sewing, there's paint, the glue gun. It's just a really great font, you know, because I know a lot of us crafty ladies um, enjoy making things for ourselves and or as gifts for other crafty ladies. Uh, but this is also really useful if you're gonna, you know, maybe you wanna make yourself a logo or you wanna sell crafty t-shirts or whatever the case may be. It's just a really neat font and I'm really enjoying it a lot. Now, another great thing about buying this font is you are covered under the uh, Design Bundles premium license. So that's really important. Make sure you give that a browse. That way you know what you can and cannot use this font and the special characters for. So let's go ahead and just create a little file and show you what a dingbat font can be used for. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a little picky. I'm going to delete some of these and choose, uh, let's see, let's take these out. Let's see which other ones we have to choose from. Okay, so once we've settled on some that we want to use, I tried to stay away from anything too sewing related. I'm not a seamstress by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. So like, I like this, this is a heat press. This is going to be my cutting machine and we can rotate these and treat these the same way that we would um, letters and which way should that go? There we go. I like that. Um, I, I'm still going to take the sewing machine out. I thought I was going to be okay with it, but it makes me feel kind of fake. All right. So then let's take a look at the actual font. That showed up in Dingbats just because that is what I was using. Let's fill it in. You know what I want to do? I'm going to say I'm crafty and I know it. What does the ampersand look like? Uh, maybe down here. And then we can center that. And let's see. This might be the beginning of a new t-shirt for me. So if I put this in the middle... 
then I can arrange all my dingbats around it. Now you notice I enlarged some of these, but I didn't make them uh, really super large because the larger that you make them, the more bold they become, the thicker the lines become. So just something to watch out for when you're sizing them individually. Okay, so I could be pretty happy with that. And let me see, I wanna make that just a little smaller. It was getting a little bold there. So what we can do too, let's use our line tool. We can space them out evenly and then group. And we'll do the same up here, space them out evenly and group. And what that does is it puts them all together and that way when I align them horizontally, it aligns them all together. So there we go, that's a neat little cut file. I'll now be able to cut this and put this on a t-shirt if I want to and you know, just overall enjoy being able to use these little extra parts of the font that normally my very limited artistic skills would not have been able to do for me. So, so dingbat fonts are really, really fun. And hopefully you feel that way too. I really love the selection from design bundles and I love that I can use those dingbat fonts for all my crafting and designing. And it just really adds that little extra character to the craft that I'm working on. So, all right guys, if you have any questions or comments, please make sure that you leave them below. We're very responsive. We always come back and answer you guys. So definitely make sure that you subscribe also because we have a lot of videos planned for you coming up and we sure don't want you to miss out. So thanks for watching today. We'll see you again next time.